the Resilience Code, Cracking the Secret to Mental Fortitude, written by Ronnie Rowland, narrated by Roman Cross, published by Growth Literacy Lounge. Introduction. What if the very barriers you believe are holding you back were actually stepping stones to unparalleled strength? Welcome to the Resilience Code, a transformative journey that begins not from without, but from within, the depths of your own mind. This isn't just another self-help guide, it's a revelation, a master key to unlocking the fortitude you've longed to possess. Why does this matter? In a world that often feels chaotic and uncontrollable, your ability to stay strong, to adapt and overcome, isn't just useful, it's essential. This book dives deep into the hidden mechanics of mental resilience, revealing how the very experiences that test our limits can forge us into invincible versions of ourselves. You'll uncover the secrets that those who thrive in crises have long understood and how these insights can radically transform your approach to challenges. Let's talk directly to you, the dreamer, the fighter, the one on the brink of giving up. You know what it's like to face obstacles that seem insurmountable. You felt the sting of setbacks and the bitter taste of defeat. But what if I told you that hidden within those very setbacks is the blueprint for your success? This book will show you how to read that blueprint and build a life of resilience that no circumstance can dismantle. Imagine a guide who has navigated the darkest valleys and scaled the highest peaks of human challenges. The author, backed by years of research and real-life experiences, offers not just stories but strategies. Strategies that are both scientifically sound and profoundly intuitive. They address the root of our fears, dissect our anxieties, and reconstruct them into foundations of strength and confidence. As we turn each page, you'll find yourself equipped with tools, not just to survive but to thrive. Each chapter builds on the last, forming a ladder that lifts you from vulnerability to invulnerability. The promise of the Resilience Code is not merely to endure the storm but to command it, transforming the fiercest winds into a force that propels you forward. He who conquers himself is the mightiest warrior. Confucius's words resonate with the essence of our journey through the Resilience Code. This book is your battle strategy, your armor, and your peace treaty all in one, guiding you to a life where your greatest adversary becomes your greatest ally. We've observed that 66% of our viewers haven't yet subscribed to our channel. We invite you to support us by clicking the subscribe button and liking this video and comment below. Your encouragement inspires us to continue creating valuable content for you. Thank you for being a part of our community and fueling our passion for sharing insights and knowledge. Chapter 1. The Power Within Your mind is a powerhouse, capable of greatness beyond your wildest dreams. Imagine for a moment that you are standing in front of an unlocked door. Behind that door is the version of you that is powerful, confident, and unafraid to take on any challenge. That door can be opened not by luck or chance, but by you tapping into the immense potential of your own mind. This chapter is about helping you realize that the key has always been in your hands. The power of your mind is your greatest asset. It can shape your reality, fuel your dreams, and help you overcome any challenge life presents. Many of us underestimate the incredible strength of our minds. We assume that greatness is reserved for others, people born with special talents, more opportunities, or better circumstances. The truth is that the true measure of greatness lies not in what you have, but in what you believe and think. The human mind has the capacity to shape reality, to manifest success, and to overcome even the toughest obstacles. By developing mental resilience, positive thinking, and a growth-oriented attitude, you can unlock your mental potential and become mentally unstoppable. 1. Discovering your inner strength. You may not realize it, but every single person is born with the innate potential to be strong, determined, and capable. The power to change your life starts with recognizing that you have the ability to decide how you react to situations. Challenges in life are inevitable, but how you face them determines your growth. Your mind can either be your greatest ally or your biggest enemy depending on how you train it. When you think about strength, you might picture physical power, someone lifting heavy weights or completing grueling tasks. Mental strength, however, is about resilience, adaptability, and an unwavering belief in yourself. It means staying calm in chaos, finding clarity in confusion, and persevering even when things get tough. 
Imagine being the eye of the storm, serene, unshakable, and in control. That is the true power of mental strength, and it's accessible to everyone who chooses to cultivate it. 2. The Role of Self-Belief Self-belief is like the foundation of a house. Without a solid foundation, it doesn't matter how beautiful or well-built the house is, it's vulnerable to collapse. In the same way, your achievements, your goals, and your ambitions depend on how strongly you believe in yourself. When you tell yourself, I am capable, it isn't just empty talk. It is a declaration of power, a statement that sets the tone for everything you do. The world is full of people who face similar challenges, yet the outcomes vary greatly based on mindset. Those who see obstacles as barriers often stop before even trying. But those who view obstacles as opportunities for growth, people who believe they have the ability to overcome, are the ones who persevere and succeed. 3. Shifting from scarcity to abundance. One major mental shift that will unlock your potential is moving from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset. A scarcity mindset tells you that you don't have enough, whether it's time, talent, resources, or support. It keeps you feeling stuck, overwhelmed, and powerless. But an abundance mindset tells you that there are opportunities everywhere and that growth is always possible. To make this shift, start by changing your language. Instead of saying, I can't do this, say, how can I make this possible instead of seeing a closed door as a dead end, see it as an opportunity to find a new way forward? Your thoughts create your reality, and the way you choose to perceive challenges will determine your path forward. 4. Visualization The first key to unlocking potential. A powerful way to begin harnessing your mental strength is through visualization. Visualization is like rehearsing your future success. Your mind doesn't distinguish well between something vividly imagined and something real, meaning, when you visualize yourself succeeding, your brain starts wiring itself towards that outcome. Picture yourself standing on the stage of your own life, confident, successful, empowered. Imagine achieving your goals and feeling the triumph of success. The clearer you make this image, the more your mind will work towards it. Make visualization a daily habit. Spend just five minutes every day imagining your ideal outcome, feeling the emotions that accompany your success and believing in that future. 5. Daily Affirmations to Build Mental Strength Another essential practice is using affirmations, positive statements that affirm your potential and capabilities. Phrases like, I am strong, I am capable, I am enough, may seem simple, but when repeated consistently, they create a powerful mental environment. They help to silence the inner critic and build the kind of self-belief that propels you forward. Think of affirmations as seeds you plant in the garden of your mind. The more you nourish them, the more they will grow, replacing the weeds of negativity with a thriving garden of empowerment. Take a moment to reflect on what you've learned about the power of your mind. Think of a time when a positive mindset helped you overcome a challenge. Hold on to that feeling. It's proof that you have everything you need within you. As you continue through this journey, remember that the greatest power you'll ever have is right between your ears. Now that you've unlocked the first door to understanding your mind's power, it's time to take it further. What happens when setbacks arise, and how do you bounce back stronger? In the next chapter, we'll delve into the art of building mental resilience and how you can turn every setback into a setup for a bigger comeback. Quote, The mind is everything. What you think, you become. Buddha Chapter 2 Cultivating Mental Resilience Setbacks aren't failures, they're blueprints for success. Life isn't a straight path. There are bumps, unexpected detours, and sometimes the road seems completely blocked. When life challenges you, it's not the challenge that defines you, it's your response. Mental resilience is the ability to adapt and bounce back, to turn obstacles into opportunities, and to thrive despite adversity. In this chapter, we're going to explore how you can cultivate this powerful trait, allowing you to face life's hardships with courage and confidence. Mental resilience is about more than just survival. It's about turning every struggle into a stepping stone. Think of a resilient tree, one that bends but doesn't break during a storm. Like that tree, your strength lies not in avoiding adversity, but in your ability to withstand it and grow stronger because of it. Cultivating resilience means not fearing failure but embracing it as part of your growth, learning to rise every time life knocks you down. 1. What is mental resilience really? 
Mental resilience is the muscle that allows you to face difficulties without crumbling. It's the ability to acknowledge the situation, assess it realistically, and take positive steps forward. Mental resilience doesn't mean ignoring problems or pretending they don't exist. It means confronting them with an open mind and a determination to overcome. Consider this every setback you face has the potential to be a stepping stone. Each moment of struggle carries within it the seed of opportunity. Resilient individuals view setbacks as temporary, not permanent roadblocks but challenges to be overcome. This mindset is the foundation for resilience, giving you the ability to rise each time you fall. 2. The power of mind over matter. Have you ever heard the phrase, mind over matter? It's more than just a motivational saying, it's the basis of resilience. The way you think about a challenge directly impacts your ability to overcome it. When faced with adversity, resilient people focus on what they can control. They work on their mindset. Mind over matter is about realizing that the only thing you can always control is how you respond. By shifting your internal dialogue from why is this happening to me to what can I learn from this? You empower yourself to act rather than react. Every person has the power to decide how to respond to difficulty. This is where mental resilience begins. 3. Strategies to build mental resilience. A. Embrace discomfort. True growth occurs when you push yourself outside your comfort zone. To build mental resilience, you have to practice embracing discomfort. This doesn't mean seeking pain, but rather, not shying away from challenging tasks, difficult conversations, or intimidating goals. The more you face discomfort, the more you realize your capacity to handle it, and your comfort zone naturally expands. Think of athletes, they grow stronger by continually challenging themselves, pushing beyond previous limits. Your mind works the same way. By embracing situations that stretch you, you're training your mind to adapt and grow. E. Reframe challenges as opportunities. Your perspective shapes your experience. When something goes wrong, it's easy to see it as a failure. But what if, instead of labeling it as a failure, you called it a lesson? Reframing challenges as learning opportunities takes away their power to make you feel defeated. Instead, they become a source of growth and motivation. For example, instead of seeing a missed promotion as a personal failure, view it as an opportunity to reflect on what can be improved and what lessons can be learned for the future. Every challenge is a chance to learn something new about yourself and your capabilities. C. Develop a support system. Resilience doesn't mean going it alone. In fact, resilient people are often those who know when and how to lean on others. Building strong relationships with people who uplift and inspire you is a crucial part of mental resilience. Share your thoughts with people who understand you. Seeking support isn't a sign of weakness, it's a sign of self-awareness and strength. 4. Consider the story of Thomas Edison. He famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Edison's journey in creating the light bulb was paved with countless setbacks. But instead of viewing each failed attempt as a reason to give up, he saw it as an opportunity to learn and adjust. His resilience led to one of the most important inventions in human history. His story reminds us that resilience is about persistence and reframing failure as part of the journey toward success. 5. Daily Practices for Building Resilience To cultivate resilience, practice these steps regularly. At the end of each day, reflect on one challenge you faced and how you responded. How could you reframe that challenge as an opportunity? What did you learn? This practice not only helps you develop resilience but also encourages a growth-oriented mindset. Develop affirmations that support resilience. Statements like I have the strength to overcome any challenge or every setback is a chance to grow stronger, reinforce mental fortitude and adaptability. A physical activity. Physical resilience and mental resilience are closely connected. Engaging in regular physical activities, such as yoga, running, or even walking, helps strengthen your mental resolve. The discipline and focus required in physical activities translate into mental benefits, providing a sense of achievement and boosting emotional endurance. Take a moment to think about your own journey so far. How have setbacks shaped who you are today? Can you see how facing difficulty has added layers of strength to your character? Cultivating resilience is a lifelong practice, but each time you bounce back from a setback, you grow a little bit stronger. Remember, 
Mental resilience is like any other muscle, it grows with consistent use. In this chapter, you've learned that resilience is the art of bouncing back. But what if you could take that resilience and use it to actually shape your reality, to grow into a stronger, more successful version of yourself? In the next chapter, we'll explore how to cultivate a growth mindset and use it to turn challenges into opportunities for remarkable personal development. Chapter 3. Building a Growth Mindset Imagine if every challenge, every obstacle, and every setback were seen not as barriers but as opportunities for transformation. This shift in perspective is the essence of a growth mindset. When you believe that your abilities can develop through dedication and hard work, you open yourself to limitless possibilities. This chapter is about fostering that kind of mindset, a growth mindset, so that instead of fearing failure, you embrace it, and instead of staying comfortable, you seek out opportunities for growth. A growth mindset is all about the belief that your abilities and intelligence are not fixed. They are dynamic and capable of expansion. It is the realization that, while you may not have control over every situation, you do have control over how you respond and how you choose to grow. This chapter will help you understand what a growth mindset truly means and how it can empower you to become unstoppable in your journey of self-improvement. 1. Fixed versus Growth Mindset Let's begin by understanding the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. A fixed mindset believes that intelligence, talent, and skills are set in stone. If you have a fixed mindset, you might think, I'm just not good at math, or I could never be as confident as her. These statements are reflections of a belief that your abilities are fixed, unable to grow or change. A growth mindset, on the other hand, embraces the idea that skills and intelligence can be developed with time, effort, and perseverance. If you hold a growth mindset, you say, I may struggle with this now, but I can get better with practice, or I can learn how to become more confident. This mindset embraces effort as the key to mastery. The difference between these two mindsets lies at the heart of your potential. With a fixed mindset, obstacles become brick walls. With a growth mindset, they become hurdles you can learn to jump over. 2. Shifting from fixed to growth A. Embrace the power of yet. A simple but powerful way to cultivate a growth mindset is by incorporating the word yet. Instead of saying, I can't do this, say, I can't do this yet. The word yet is transformative. It implies progress, growth, and the belief that your current state is not your permanent state. This small shift can make an enormous difference. By embracing yet, you reframe struggles as temporary and growth as inevitable. The word acts is a bridge from where you are now to where you want to be. E. Learn from failures. People with a growth mindset see failure as an integral part of the learning process. Every time you make a mistake, you gain an opportunity to improve. Consider failure as a natural part of success, a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block. A helpful practice is to reflect on your past failures not with judgment but with curiosity. Ask yourself, what did I learn from this experience? How can I use this knowledge to do better next time? This way, failure becomes a powerful tool for progress. C. The role of effort. In a growth mindset, effort is celebrated. It's not just about talent, it's about persistence, practice, and dedication. People who succeed are those who keep going who see each obstacle as a chance to improve and not as a reason to quit. Think of athletes, artists, or musicians. Their mastery comes from thousands of hours of practice, from the determination to keep improving despite setbacks. Embrace the idea that effort is not a sign of inadequacy, but a signal that growth is happening. 3. Building your growth toolkit. A. Challenge yourself regularly. Growth happens at the edge of your comfort zone. Each week, Challenge yourself to do something that feels just a little out of reach, something that stretches you. Whether it's speaking up in a meeting, trying a new hobby, or setting an ambitious fitness goal, the key is to make stretching your abilities a habit. E. Keep a growth journal. Documenting your progress is a powerful tool for cultivating a growth mindset. At the end of each day or week, write down one challenge you faced and how you handled it. Reflect on the steps you took, how you felt, and what you learned. Keeping a growth journal not only helps track progress but also reinforces the idea that you are in a constant state of evolution. C. Adopt growth-oriented language. 
Language plays a crucial role in shaping mindset. Pay attention to how you talk to yourself. Replace limiting thoughts with growth-focused alternatives. Instead of I'm not good at this, say I'm learning how to do this. Instead of I failed, say I'm learning from this setback. These linguistic shifts are subtle but powerful, reinforcing the belief that growth is always possible. 4. Stories of Growth in Action Michael Jordan, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, was famously cut from his high school basketball team. Instead of giving up, he used that setback as motivation. He put in countless hours of practice to prove that he was capable. He believed that his abilities were not fixed, that through dedication and effort, he could grow into the player he wanted to be. This story illustrates that greatness isn't born, it's built through a mindset that embraces challenges and failure as part of the journey. 5. Creating your growth environment. Your environment plays a significant role in cultivating a growth mindset. Surround yourself with people who inspire you, who encourage your growth, and who believe in their own capacity for development. Positive influences can help reinforce your growth-oriented beliefs and push you further. Join communities or groups that foster growth, whether it's through fitness challenges, creative workshops, or learning seminars. Being in an environment where growth is celebrated will keep you motivated and accountable, and it will remind you that you are not alone in this journey. The way you think about yourself and your abilities sets the boundaries of your potential. But the wonderful news is that those boundaries can be expanded endlessly. With a growth mindset, there are no fixed limits, only stepping stones on the path to mastery and fulfillment. Take a moment to think about how you've approached challenges in the past. Now, Imagine how you could approach them differently with an open, growth-oriented perspective. You now understand the foundation of a growth mindset. But it's not enough to believe in your potential. You must also have a clear direction. How do you set meaningful goals that propel you forward? In the next chapter, we'll learn about the art of setting powerful goals and intentions and how they can serve as the roadmap to your growth journey. Chapter 4. Setting Powerful Goals and Intentions a goal without intention is just a wish. A growth mindset can open up the possibilities in front of you, but to bring those possibilities into reality, you need clear, actionable goals and strong intentions behind them. Goals are the compass that gives your life direction, and intentions are the fuel that drives you towards those goals. This chapter will guide you on how to set powerful, achievable goals that align with your values and how to fuel those goals with the right mindset and purpose to ensure that your path forward is not just clear, but purposeful. Setting goals is about deciding what you want and creating a map to get there. However, simply stating a goal is not enough. The difference between people who dream and those who achieve lies in the power of intention. Goals give you direction, but intentions give you motivation and meaning. They align your goals with your deeper purpose. Together, goals and intentions allow you to grow in a meaningful way, creating real change and progress. 1. Understanding the difference between goals and intentions. To effectively set goals, it's crucial to understand how they differ from intentions. Goals are specific outcomes you wish to achieve. They are measurable and time-bound, like I want to run a marathon in six months, or I want to save $10,000 this year. Intentions are your reasons behind the goal, your why. Intentions are more about the quality of your journey and the energy you bring to it. Like I want to feel strong and proud of my body, or I want to develop financial security and confidence. Intentions keep you aligned with your values and keep you motivated, even when the goal feels difficult or far away. A goal gives you a destination and intention ensures that your journey is purposeful and satisfying. Think of it this way, a goal is a mountain peak you wish to reach, while your intention is the reason why you're climbing that mountain in the first place. 2. Setting smart goals. The first step in setting powerful goals is to ensure that they are smart, specific. A clear, well-defined goal leaves no room for ambiguity. For example, instead of saying I want to be healthier, say I want to exercise for 30 minutes, 5 days a week. Measurable. You need to track your progress. If your goal isn't measurable, you won't know when you're succeeding. Instead of I want to read more, say, I want to read two books per month. Achievable. Your goals need to be realistic given your current circumstances. Setting a goal that is impossible will lead to frustration. Break large goals into smaller, achievable tasks. 
relevant. The goal should align with your broader aspirations and values. It should matter to you personally. Ask yourself, does this goal matter to me, and why? In time bound, setting a deadline gives urgency to your goal. Instead of saying, I'll eventually start a business, say, I want to create a business plan by the end of the year. Smart goals help make your objectives tangible, achievable, and clear. They give structure to your ambitions and help guide your focus and energy. 3. Creating Strong Intentions Now that you've set a smart goal, it's time to create an intention to fuel it. Ask yourself, why do I want this? Your why is the energy behind your actions, the reminder that drives you when the process becomes challenging. To set an effective intention, consider Emotion What emotional experience are you seeking from achieving this goal? Joy, freedom, security, confidence, connection to values. How does this goal align with what matters most to you? If your goal is to exercise regularly, your intention might be to feel more alive and care for my health because my well-being is a priority. Write down your intention and place it somewhere you can see it often. Let it serve as a reminder that your journey isn't just about the end point, it's about the quality of your effort along the way. 4. Visualization to reinforce goals and intentions. A powerful tool in setting and achieving your goals is visualization. Visualization is the practice of mentally rehearsing the achievement of your goal. It aligns your mind with your desired outcome, making it feel more real and attainable. Here's how to practice visualization. Sit comfortably, close your eyes, and visualize yourself achieving your goal. Picture it in vivid detail. What does it look, feel, and sound like? Visualize the process as well as the result. Imagine yourself putting in the work, overcoming obstacles, and staying motivated by your intention. Engage your senses. The more real your visualization, the more powerful it becomes. Imagine the pride in your chest, the smile on your face, and the emotions of accomplishment. Regular visualization helps maintain focus and motivation. It can turn abstract goals into something your mind can work towards with confidence and determination. 5. Overcoming Common Barriers to Goal Achievement Everyone faces challenges in reaching their goals. Here are common barriers and how to overcome them. A. Fear of failure. Fear of failure often stops us from even trying. Remember, failure isn't a sign of inadequacy, it's a sign that you're challenging yourself. Reframe failures as lessons and use them to inform your future efforts. B. Lack of clarity. If your goal isn't clear, it's easy to lose motivation. Make sure you have specific steps outlined and a roadmap that you can follow. C. Procrastination. Breaking a big goal into smaller, manageable steps can help combat procrastination. Take small actions every day and celebrate each step forward. It's these consistent actions that lead to significant progress over time. E. Limiting beliefs. Frequently, the barriers to our success are not external, but internal, crafted from our own perceptions of our capabilities. Embrace positive affirmations such as, I am capable of achieving my goals and confront any negative self-talk that suggests otherwise. Always bear in mind, the sole architect of your boundaries is you. 6. Success Stories The Role of Goals and Intentions J.K. Rowling faced countless rejections before her Harry Potter series was published. Her goal was clear, get her story published, but her intention ran deeper. It was about creating a magical world she believed in, a story she was passionate about sharing with the world. That intention gave her the strength to persist in the face of rejection after rejection, ultimately leading her to success. Her story shows that a goal paired with a strong intention can help you persevere through even the toughest barriers. Setting goals gives you direction, and setting intentions fuels your journey. Think of a goal you have now. Are you clear about your reasons for wanting it? Take some time to write down your goal using the SMART criteria and pair it with a strong intention that will inspire and motivate you. You're not just setting goals, you're shaping the person you wish to become. Now that you have your goals and intentions aligned, it's time to take the next step, visualizing success and building the mental blueprint for achieving your dreams. Visualization is not just imagining outcomes, it's preparing your mind for success. In the next chapter, we'll explore how to effectively use visualization techniques to stay focused and motivated as you pursue your goals. Chapter 5 Visualization for Victory 
If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Every great achievement starts as an idea. Before an athlete wins a championship, a student graduates top of their class, or a business owner achieves success, there's an image in their mind, a vivid picture of what that success looks like. Visualization is the art of creating mental images of your goals, making them so real that your mind starts believing in them. In this chapter, we'll explore how you can harness the power of visualization to manifest your desires and achieve your goals. Visualization is more than daydreaming. It's about creating a clear mental image of your goals to condition your mind for success. Visualization helps program your subconscious, builds confidence, and provides a mental rehearsal for the achievement you want. By regularly picturing your desired outcome, you're not only more motivated to work towards it, but also better equipped to overcome obstacles along the way. 1. The Science Behind Visualization It might sound like magic, but visualization has real scientific backing. The human brain responds to vividly imagined events in much the same way as it does to real experiences. This is why visualization is used extensively by athletes, business leaders, and artists. They harness their mind to prepare for real-world challenges. Research has shown that when you visualize yourself performing a skill, your brain activates the same neural pathways that are used when actually performing the task. This means your mind can practice and get better at an activity even before you physically do it. For example, Olympic athletes use visualization to mentally rehearse their performances. By repeatedly seeing themselves completing the perfect jump, run, or routine, they prepare both their body and their mind to execute that performance in real life. 2. How to visualize effectively. To make visualization work for you, it's important to approach it with intention and clarity. Here are the steps to create a powerful visualization practice. A. Set aside time daily. Dedicate at least 5 to 10 minutes a day to your visualization practice. Consistency is key. When you visualize regularly, you train your brain to focus on your goals with precision. B. Engage all your senses. Close your eyes and imagine your goal vividly. If your goal is to run a marathon, picture yourself crossing the finish line. What do you see? The crowd cheering. What do you hear? The sound of your feet hitting the pavement. The roar of applause. What do you feel? The wind in your face, the pride in your chest, and the burn of effort turning into triumph. C. Imagine the process, not just the result. Visualizing the result is important, but also focus on the steps you need to take to get there. See yourself working hard, overcoming challenges, and persisting. This not only prepares you for the effort required, but also helps build resilience and confidence. E. Make it emotional. Connect deeply to the emotions behind the visualization. Feel the joy of achieving your goal, the pride, the relief, the excitement. Emotions make your visualizations more powerful, anchoring the experience and making it feel more real. 3. Visualization Techniques to Practice Here are some visualization techniques that can help you stay motivated and focused on your goals. A. The Perfect Day Visualization Spend a few minutes every morning visualizing your ideal day. What will you accomplish? How will you overcome any obstacles? Imagine everything going right. This sets a positive tone for the day, preparing your mind to respond constructively to any situation. B. Vision Board Create a vision board, a physical representation of your goals using images, words, and phrases that inspire you. This is a great way to keep your goals in front of you daily, serving as a reminder of what you're working towards. Spend time looking at it and visualizing your success. C. Mental rehearsal. If you have an important event coming up, like a presentation, a test, or an athletic performance, rehearse it in your mind. See yourself performing confidently and skillfully, managing any nerves and excelling. This mental rehearsal helps decrease anxiety and increases confidence when the time comes to perform. 4. The Power of Visualization in Real Life Jim Carrey, the actor and comedian, is a famous example of the power of visualization. Early in his career, when he was struggling, Carrey wrote himself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, and he dated it for 10 years in the future. He would carry this check in his wallet and visualize being a successful actor. Just before the date he had written on the check, he landed a major role in a movie that paid him $10 million. 
His story is a testament to the power of having a clear vision and believing in its realization. Visualization does not guarantee success, but it opens your mind to the possibilities, keeps you focused, and primes you for action. It transforms the abstract into something your mind and body can work towards with determination and clarity. 5. Overcoming Common Challenges with Visualization A. Doubt. It's natural to doubt whether visualization will work. You may think this is just imagining, how could it possibly help? But visualization isn't about magic, it's about conditioning your mind. It helps create an inner belief that leads to action. Overcoming doubt requires practicing visualization consistently. Over time, as you see small achievements in progress, your confidence in the process will grow. E. Staying focused. Many people struggle with staying focused during visualization. The mind tends to wander, especially if you're new to the practice. If this happens, don't be hard on yourself. Gently bring your attention back to the mental image. Start small with shorter visualization sessions and gradually build up your focus. The more you practice, the easier it becomes. C. Impatience. You might not see immediate results, and that can be frustrating. Remember, visualization works best when combined with action. You can't just visualize success, you also have to take the steps to make it happen. Trust the process, stay consistent, and remember that real change takes time. The practice of visualization allows you to harness the immense creative power of your mind. It transforms your goals from vague dreams into vivid, motivating realities. Take a moment today to visualize your goal, engage all your senses, feel the emotions, and make it real in your mind. You're preparing yourself not just to dream, but to achieve. Now that you've begun the powerful practice of visualizing your success, it's time to focus on another key component of mental strength, emotional intelligence. Visualization helps you stay motivated, but emotional intelligence helps you navigate life's challenges with grace and understanding. In the next chapter, we'll explore how mastering your emotions can empower you to build resilience, deepen relationships, and achieve success. Chapter 6. Mastering Emotional Intelligence True strength isn't just mental, it's emotional resilience too. We often hear about the importance of mental strength, but there's an equally powerful force that determines your success emotional intelligence EI. Emotional intelligence is the ability to understand, use, and manage your emotions in positive ways. It's what helps you navigate conflict, connect with others, and handle challenges with grace. This chapter is dedicated to helping you harness emotional intelligence so that you can improve your relationships, maintain inner balance, and build a foundation for lasting success. Emotional intelligence is the glue that holds everything together. It's how you interact with yourself and others. By developing EI, you improve your ability to adapt, understand others, manage stress, and maintain your mental strength even during the most challenging times. Mastering emotional intelligence is about recognizing your own emotions, understanding the emotions of others, and responding rather than reacting in every situation. 1. What is emotional intelligence and why does it matter? Emotional intelligence is composed of four key components. A. Self-awareness. This is the foundation of EI. Self-awareness means being able to recognize your emotions as they happen. It involves understanding your emotional triggers, knowing how different situations affect your feelings, and observing how your emotions influence your thoughts and behaviors. Self-awareness allows you to respond intentionally rather than react impulsively. E. B. Self-management. Once you're aware of your emotions, the next step is managing them effectively. Self-management doesn't mean ignoring emotions, but instead finding constructive ways to express them. It's about maintaining control, even under stress, and choosing how to respond to emotions in ways that are aligned with your goals. C. Social awareness. Social awareness is the ability to perceive and understand the emotions of others. It involves empathy the capacity to put yourself in another person's shoes and feel what they are experiencing. Being socially aware allows you to build meaningful connections, resolve conflicts, and create more harmonious relationships. ED, Relationship Management. This aspect of EI involves using your awareness of both your own emotions and others' emotions to communicate effectively and manage relationships successfully. 
It's about inspiring, influencing, and helping others while managing conflict and encouraging a supportive environment. Emotional intelligence is a critical skill that affects everything from your personal relationships to your professional success. People with high emotional intelligence tend to navigate stressful situations more smoothly, resolve conflicts with greater ease, and create deeper connections with those around them. 2. Self-awareness – the foundation of emotional intelligence To build emotional intelligence, start by becoming more self-aware. A. Practice observing your emotions Take time each day to observe your emotional state. What are you feeling? Why are you feeling? Why are you feeling that way? For instance, if you feel anxious, try to trace it back to its root cause. Observing without judgment is key. You are not labeling any emotions as good or bad. You're simply noting their presence. E. Identify emotional triggers. Certain situations, people, or even thoughts can trigger strong emotional reactions. Make a list of your common emotional triggers. Understanding what pushes your emotional buttons helps you anticipate your reactions and prepares you to respond in healthier ways. C. Name your emotions. It's easier to manage your emotions when you can clearly name them. Instead of broadly feeling bad, recognize whether it's anger, sadness, frustration, or disappointment. Identifying the specific emotion gives you clarity and power over it. 3. Self-management. Taking charge of your emotions. A. Pause before reacting. One of the most powerful self-management tools is the ability to pause. When faced with a strong emotional response, take a breath before you react. This simple pause can prevent impulsive reactions and give you time to choose a response that is aligned with your values and goals. E. Positive reframing. Reframing is a powerful tool for managing emotions. It involves changing the way you perceive a situation to find a more positive outlook. For instance, instead of feeling overwhelmed by a new challenge at work, reframe it as an opportunity for growth and a chance to demonstrate your skills. C. Stress relief techniques. Develop strategies to manage stress effectively. Mindfulness meditation, deep breathing exercises, physical activity, and journaling can all help in managing strong emotions. Building these practices into your routine helps you stay calm and focused, even in challenging situations. 4. Social awareness and empathy. A. Active listening. To understand others, you must first be willing to listen. Practice active listening by giving people your full attention. Put away distractions, maintain eye contact, and listen not just to their words but to the emotions behind those words. Reflect back on what they've said to show that you understand. B. Nonverbal cues. Understanding body language is crucial for social awareness. Pay attention to people's facial expressions, posture, and tone of voice. These nonverbal cues often convey more than words do. By being mindful of nonverbal signals, you can better understand what others are feeling. C. Practicing empathy. Empathy is the ability to put yourself in another person's shoes. When someone is sharing a struggle or challenge, resist the urge to immediately offer solutions. Instead, try to understand their emotions. Say things like, That sounds really difficult or I can imagine that must be really frustrating. Empathy builds trust and deepens relationships. 5. Relationship management, building stronger connections. Emotional intelligence is not just about you, it's about your ability to build meaningful relationships. A. Clear communication. Clear communication is key to relationship management. This means expressing your thoughts honestly while being respectful of others' feelings. It involves using I statements, such as I feel upset when this happens, instead of blaming others, which can create defensiveness. E. Conflict resolution. In times of conflict, emotional intelligence becomes particularly important. Instead of trying to win the argument, focus on finding a solution that benefits everyone. Use empathy to understand the other person's perspective and find common ground that allows you to move forward together. C. Influence and inspiration. Relationship management also involves being a positive influence on others. Encourage the people around you, celebrate their successes, and offer support when they need it. By being a source of positivity, you not only strengthen your own relationships but also help others grow. 6. Real-life example Oprah Winfrey Oprah Winfrey's incredible success is often attributed to her high emotional intelligence. Despite a challenging upbringing, 
she has shown an extraordinary ability to connect with people emotionally. Her empathy and authenticity have allowed her to build a massive audience that feels personally connected to her. Oprah listens intently, understands people's stories, and shows genuine compassion, traits that have set her apart as one of the most influential figures in media. 7. Practicing Emotional Intelligence in Daily Life Here are some exercises to help you improve your emotional intelligence. A. Journaling Emotions Take a few minutes at the end of each day to write about the emotions you experienced. Reflect on why you felt a certain way and whether you managed those emotions effectively. Journaling helps build self-awareness and provides insight into patterns in your behavior. E. Empathy Practice The next time someone tells you about a problem they're facing, instead of jumping in with advice, take a moment to simply listen and acknowledge their feelings. Say something like, I can see why that would be hard. This practice deepens your empathy and strengthens your connection with others. C. Emotional Temperature Check Set a few reminders on your phone throughout the day to pause and check in with yourself. Ask, what am I feeling right now? This practice helps build self-awareness and makes you more attuned to how your emotions shift throughout the day. Emotional intelligence is about understanding both yourself and the people around you. By improving your self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship skills, you can handle challenges with grace and improve the quality of your relationships. Take time today to practice empathy, observe your emotions, and manage your responses more intentionally. You've begun mastering emotional intelligence, which is essential for building resilience and forming strong relationships. Now, it's time to look inward and strengthen the relationship you have with yourself. In the next chapter, we'll explore the power of self-compassion, how being kind to yourself can build unshakable inner strength and lead you toward a happier, more fulfilling life. Chapter 7 The Strength of Self-Compassion How you treat yourself determines how far you'll go. In a world that constantly pushes us to achieve, compete, and hustle, we often forget one crucial element for long-term success, self-compassion. Many people believe that being hard on themselves is the way to grow and succeed, but the opposite is true. Self-compassion is the foundation for resilience, emotional health, and personal fulfillment. It helps you bounce back from setbacks, embrace your flaws, and build the kind of inner strength that sustains you through life's toughest challenges. In this chapter, we will explore how treating yourself with kindness can actually make you stronger and more resilient. Self-compassion is about being your own best ally instead of your harshest critic. When things go wrong or when you fail, self-compassion offers a way to treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you would offer a close friend. It's about recognizing that everyone makes mistakes and that you, like everyone else, deserve patience and support during difficult times. This chapter will show you how self-compassion can enhance your emotional resilience and give you the strength to keep moving forward even in the face of adversity. 1. What is self-compassion? Self-compassion, as defined by researcher Dr. Kristen Neff, consists of three main components. A. Self-kindness versus self-judgment. Self-compassion means being kind to yourself when things go wrong, rather than being self-critical. Instead of berating yourself for a mistake, you acknowledge the difficulty of the situation and speak to yourself in a kind and supportive way. For example, if you miss a deadline, instead of saying, I'm such a failure, you might say, this is tough, but I'll learn from it and do better next time. E. Common humanity versus isolation. When we fail or face hardship, we often feel isolated, as though we are the only ones struggling. Self-compassion reminds us that difficulties are part of the shared human experience. Everyone experiences setbacks, and you are not alone in your challenges. This understanding helps you feel connected to others, reducing feelings of isolation. C. Mindfulness versus over-identification. Mindfulness is the ability to observe your thoughts and emotions without getting swept up in them. When you practice mindfulness, you recognize your pain without exaggerating it or ignoring it. You see your emotions for what they are, temporary experiences that will pass. This helps you maintain perspective and avoid getting overwhelmed by negative self-talk. Together, these elements form the basis of self-compassion, which is not about ignoring your problems but rather approaching them with understanding and care. 2. 
Why self-compassion is essential for mental strength. Many people mistakenly believe that self-compassion leads to laziness or lack of motivation. However, research shows that people who practice self-compassion are more resilient, motivated, and able to cope with challenges. Why? Because self-compassion builds an internal environment of safety and trust, where failure is seen as a part of growth, not something to fear. A. Self-compassion and resilience. When you're kind to yourself during tough times, you're better able to learn from the experience and move on. Self-compassionate people are more likely to bounce back from failure because they don't dwell on their mistakes or beat themselves up. Instead, they see setbacks as opportunities for learning and growth, which fosters resilience. E. Self-compassion and motivation. Ironically, self-compassion actually enhances motivation. When you aren't afraid of failure, you're more willing to take risks, try new things, and pursue your goals with enthusiasm. Self-compassionate people know that mistakes are not the end of the world, which makes them more likely to persevere through difficult times. C. Self-compassion and mental health. Self-compassion is also strongly linked to mental well-being. People who practice self-compassion experience less anxiety, depression, and stress because they don't internalize negative experiences. By treating themselves with kindness, they create an emotional buffer that protects them from becoming overwhelmed by life's challenges. 3. Developing a self-compassion practice. You can build self-compassion just like you build any other skill. Here are some practical ways to start integrating self-compassion into your daily life. A. Speak to yourself like a friend. The next time you make a mistake, imagine what you would say to a close friend in the same situation. Chances are, you would be kind, understanding, and supportive. Now, say those same words to yourself. This simple shift can help you change your internal dialogue and treat yourself with more kindness. E. Self-compassion break. Whenever you notice you're being particularly hard on yourself, take a self-compassion break. Pause, take a deep breath, and acknowledge what you're feeling. Say to yourself, this is a moment of suffering. Everyone experiences difficulties in life. May I be kind to myself in this moment. This practice helps interrupt negative self-talk and replace it with a more compassionate approach. C. Use physical gestures of kindness. Sometimes physical gestures can help reinforce self-compassion. Place a hand on your heart or gently hug yourself when you're feeling upset. These small acts of care can activate feelings of warmth and support within your body, helping you feel more connected to yourself. 4. Overcoming self-criticism. For many people, the biggest obstacle to self-compassion is the voice of self-criticism. We often believe that being hard on ourselves will push us to succeed, but this approach usually backfires, leading to stress, anxiety, and burnout. A. Recognize your inner critic. The first step to overcoming self-criticism is recognizing it. Pay attention to the critical thoughts that arise when you make a mistake. What does your inner critic say? How harsh is it? Write down some of the common phrases your inner critic uses and then challenge them. B. Challenge your critical thoughts. Once you've identified your critical thoughts, ask yourself if they're really true. Are you really a failure or did you just have a bad day? Are you really not good enough or are you just feeling insecure? Challenging these thoughts helps diminish their power. C. Replace criticism with compassion. Instead of criticizing yourself for a mistake, Offer yourself words of compassion. You might say, I'm having a tough time right now, and that's okay. I can learn from this and move forward. This approach helps reduce the emotional toll of failure and keeps you focused on growth. 5. Example. Serena Williams. Serena Williams, one of the greatest athletes of all time, has faced both triumphs and setbacks in her career. She has spoken openly about how self-compassion has played a role in her resilience, helping her recover from losses and come back stronger. In interviews, Williams has shared that she learned to be kinder to herself after difficult matches, acknowledging that self-criticism only holds her back. By embracing self-compassion, she has been able to maintain her focus, confidence, and determination. 6. Practical Exercises for Self-Compassion Here are a few exercises to help you strengthen your self-compassion practice. A. Self-Compassion Journal. At the end of each day, write about a difficult situation you faced and how you treated yourself in that moment. Reflect on whether you were kind to yourself or critical. Then, 
write down how you could respond with more self-compassion next time. E. Guided Self-Compassion Meditation Listen to a self-compassion meditation where you're guided to offer yourself kindness, forgiveness, and understanding. This can help shift your mindset and cultivate a more compassionate relationship with yourself. C. Self-Compassion Mantra Develop a self-compassion mantra that you can use during tough moments. It might be something like, I am enough, or I'm doing my best, and that's okay. Repeat it to yourself whenever you're feeling down or doubting yourself. Self-compassion is not about ignoring your flaws. It's about accepting them and treating yourself with kindness anyway. Remember, the way you talk to yourself matters. The more compassionate you are towards yourself, the stronger and more resilient you become. Take some time today to reflect on how you can start incorporating self-compassion into your daily life. Now that you've learned the art of self-compassion, it's time to tackle another major obstacle to personal growth, limiting beliefs. In the next chapter, we'll dive into how you can identify and overcome the beliefs that are holding you back, allowing you to unlock your full potential. Chapter 8. Overcoming Limiting Beliefs the only limits that truly exist are those we place upon ourselves. The journey of mental strength, resilience, and personal growth is ultimately a journey of overcoming the barriers we've placed in our own minds. Limiting beliefs are those invisible walls that keep you in a box, confining your potential and dampening your aspirations. Often these beliefs are born out of past experiences, fears, and social conditioning. In this final chapter, we're going to take down those walls. We will identify your limiting beliefs, dismantle them, and replace them with empowering beliefs that push you toward limitless growth. To be truly unstoppable, you must conquer the negative beliefs that are holding you back. These self-imposed limitations can influence every decision you make, affecting your relationships, career, health, and personal fulfillment. The aim of this chapter is to help you recognize these hidden beliefs, challenge their validity, and actively replace them with empowering alternatives. Once you remove these internal barriers, you become free to step fully into your power and potential. 1. Identifying limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are often deeply ingrained, which means that identifying them can be tricky. They tend to operate silently in the background, shaping your behavior without you even noticing. But they often manifest in the form of negative self-talk or recurring doubts. It's time to shine a light on these hidden constraints. A. What are limiting beliefs? Limiting beliefs are negative thoughts you accept as absolute truths. They may sound like, I'm not smart enough to start my own business. I'm not worthy of love. People like me can't be successful. These beliefs are powerful because they influence your actions. If you believe you're not capable, you're less likely to take risks, set big goals, or persevere through challenges. Identifying these thoughts is the first crucial step in overcoming them. E how to recognize them. Reflect on the areas of your life where you feel blocked or unfulfilled. Ask yourself, what story do I tell myself about why this area of my life isn't thriving? Are there any recurring negative thoughts that come to mind when I face a challenge in this area? Writing down these beliefs helps you recognize their impact. If you're unsure, listen to your self-talk when you make mistakes or when you face new opportunities. Often, limiting beliefs show up in phrases like I can't, I'm not enough, or I could never. 2. Challenging your limiting beliefs. Once you've identified your limiting beliefs, it's time to challenge their validity. Remember, beliefs are not truths, they're interpretations of experiences. You have the power to change your interpretations. A. Questioning the belief. Ask yourself these questions. Is this belief really true? More often than not, limiting beliefs are exaggerated or inaccurate reflections of past experiences. Look for evidence that contradicts the belief. Where did this belief come from? Sometimes a belief stems from a single incident in childhood or something someone said to you. Identifying its origin helps you recognize that it's a product of the past, not an immutable truth. What would I say to a friend with this belief? Imagine someone you care about had this belief. Would you tell them it's true? Would you be as harsh to them as you are to yourself? E collecting counter-evidence. Write down instances where this belief has been proven wrong. For example, if your limiting belief is I'm not capable of being a leader, think of times when you successfully led a project or guided someone through a challenge. 
Counter evidence helps break the power of limiting beliefs by showing that there's another side to the story. C. Reframing your belief. Reframe your limiting belief into an empowering one. If your belief is I always fail, reframe it to failure is a natural part of growth, and I learn from my mistakes. Reframing doesn't ignore reality but instead allows you to adopt a growth-focused perspective that inspires action. 3. Replacing limiting beliefs with empowering beliefs. Once you challenge and dismantle your limiting beliefs, the next step is to actively replace them with empowering beliefs that align with the person you wish to become. A. Affirmations for empowerment. Affirmations are a powerful way to solidify new beliefs. Create affirmations that directly counteract your limiting beliefs. For instance, limiting belief. I'm not creative. Empowering affirmation. I am creative and I allow my unique ideas to flow freely. Repeat these affirmations daily, especially in moments when you're tempted to fall back into old thought patterns. Consistent repetition helps reprogram your subconscious mind to align with your new belief. B. Visualization as a tool. Use visualization to reinforce your new belief. Spend time each day visualizing yourself acting on this new belief. See yourself succeeding, achieving, and growing. Engage your emotions, feel the pride, the confidence, and the fulfillment that come with it. The more vivid your visualization, the more your subconscious will start to align with this new reality. C. Take action to prove your beliefs. Taking action is what ultimately solidifies your new beliefs. If you're replacing I'm not good at public speaking with I am a capable communicator, take every opportunity to speak in public, even if it starts with small audiences. Each time you take action, you're proving to yourself that your new belief is true, creating a positive cycle that builds momentum. 4. Overcoming the fear of change. Breaking free from limiting beliefs requires embracing change, and change can be daunting. Often our limiting beliefs are comfortable simply because they are familiar. However, growth requires stepping into the unknown. A. Face discomfort. Recognize that discomfort is an inherent aspect of personal development. It signifies that you are expanding past your previous limitations. Rather than shying away from discomfort, confront it head on and welcome it as a marker that you are progressing correctly. B. E, surround yourself with support. Share your journey with supportive friends or mentors. Sometimes the voices of others can help amplify your new empowering beliefs until they become strong enough to fully replace the old ones. A community of people who believe in growth can be instrumental in helping you maintain motivation and stay accountable. 5. Example J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series, faced countless setbacks before she became a household name. She was rejected by numerous publishers, was a single mother living on welfare, and was filled with doubts. But instead of letting these challenges limit her, she reframed her beliefs about her capabilities. She continued to write, believing in her story and in herself. Her belief that she could create something meaningful not only transformed her life, but also inspired millions around the world. Her story reminds us that success comes from challenging our limiting beliefs and refusing to let them define us. 6. Exercises for Overcoming Limiting Beliefs A. The Belief Swap Draw a line down the center of a piece of paper. On the left side, write down a limiting belief you hold. On the right side, write down an empowering belief to replace it. For each limiting belief, practice this swap and place the list where you can see it daily as a reminder of the transformation you are choosing. B. What if positive reflection? Take a limiting belief and flip it by asking, what if the opposite were true? For example, instead of I'm not good enough, ask, what if I am more than enough? Write down what your life might look like if this new empowering belief were true. This helps open your mind to new possibilities and rewires your thinking. C. Daily Challenge Tracker Every day, challenge yourself to take one small action that supports a new empowering belief. Write down what you did and how it made you feel. This exercise not only helps replace old beliefs but also builds confidence through consistent positive actions. Final words. Your journey to becoming mentally unstoppable is not about perfection, it's about progress. It's about stepping forward with courage, even when fear lingers, about being compassionate with yourself when you stumble, and about breaking down the walls in your own mind that have kept you from realizing your potential.
Remember, every step you've taken in this book, every chapter, every reflection, every moment of discomfort has been a testament to your commitment to growth. True strength isn't just about power, it's about understanding, adaptability, and persistence. The strength of your mind is limitless when you choose to nurture it, to challenge it, and to believe in its power. You are capable of greatness, not because you never fall, but because you always get back up. As you continue forward, take these lessons with you. Embrace your imperfections, challenge your beliefs, and trust in the resilience you've cultivated. You are your greatest ally, your most powerful architect, and your story is just beginning. May your journey be filled with intention, courage, and boundless growth. Take care and be well.